also added to that, I would say the how Connor O'Malley uses the selfie stick in his new film, <laughs> The Mask, and how he uses great segue. online platform. How he uses online, <laughs> thank you. How he uses online platforms <laughs> to really get at the feeling of being online on the internet too much, like being so permanently online that it creates a sense of mania. Um, mm. I I think I watched this yesterday and it would like it really quite upset me a lot. <laughs> like, I was really <laughs> upset by this movie. Um, I think it's one of the best of the year, um, and it really oh, kind of yeah it cuts something. I don't know how he does it. It's something in his performance because you could take all those textures, take all that same framework, everything, and you put another performance in there, and it's just something off. He has struck a balance with his performance that allows you to be in this world with these characters who are manic. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's, he, he oh, I yeah. don't know how he does it. He's, he's got like a special thing going on where, you know, we, we're all, he's, there is a self-awareness there. It's revealed also in the credits, the self-awareness as well. You know, when it says, you know, with special thanks to, you know, Josh and Benny Safdie and all the people that worked on it and blah 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 and it's written and directed by him like they make it clear that this is a film like they could upload that and not have the credits on there and you would mm. be someone someone could watch that and go like what the fuck was that like they could be you know taken to that level but I don't know it, it, I think it's a great representation of just online spiraling you know that rabbit hole spiraling that you go through when you're online too much. So, so, and, uh, so I I have an awkward confession to make, which mm. is that because you sent this to me during, you know, just for the listeners' sake, a quite busy period for me, I'd, I'd come off the back of you sending me the, the man who couldn't miss screenings. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I kind of expected something uh, similar in the sense that, you know, underground uh, YouTube primarily a YouTube-based filmmaker, um, doing something quite contemporary and quite, you know, uh, quite subversive and quite funny. And so for for probably 65% of the film, I was like, I thought it was, I was seeing a, a real documentary. In the same way that you sent me the boogie one, I thought I was watching the boogie one about the guy that Conor O'Malley plays. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, right. Yeah, I mean, which which was incredible, by the way, because I do think, and this goes back to the point I think you were just making, someone could watch that in the way that I did, um, you know, come across that on YouTube through the algorithm or, or through whatever means, and think, you know, God, this is a real guy. Mm. And then it was only afterwards I was like, oh my God, not only is I mean, it, there were there were times where I was like, okay, it's it's clearly a, a work. Um, and that and that got to, to kind of a it, that reached a crescendo at certain points. So I was like, yeah, okay, that's that. I, I've I've been misled here. That this, this is a work, mm. uh, and we can dig into that a little bit um, because yeah, there are some some unbelievable high points in his depiction of a of a spiraling, terminally online, um, obsessed with the the Hollywood dream guy. Mm. Um, but yeah, I was. I was definitely one of the people which I think w this film would function best for, 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 for a lot of its runtime, which is you just come across this film and you think this is a real guy. And I guess it is testament to, you know, what he's, what, um, what O'Malley's put together here in that it feels that convincing because I'm sure you who knew obviously from the beginning about Conor O'Malley, about his kind of SNL background or his comedy background and that this yeah. was clearly a bit... Like you were probably like, God, this this could be real, you know, and that's probably yeah. the full strength of the film, isn't it? Well, the thing that I, I it's was the, question it's, it's the t it's the TikTok king of comedy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is actually in a way. Yeah, God, I didn't even think of that. Oh, and the the roommate Sandra Bernhard. Oh my God, yeah, that's a great great shout. That's a great yes, shout. Good, no, great the, shout from yourself you know as well. Yeah, and thought about the roommate what? thing. Yeah, do you know what got me was that, like, I thought, like, there's no way he's been making this for four years, has he? Like, when he was, like, 2019, 20... I was like, God, has he really been working on this as much? Is, it, like, is that the case? Sorry, it's cut you off, Joe. Is that... Had I don't been, know. Had he been trying to make... Oh, so know. that's unknown. 
I wouldn't be I'd, surprised though, because it reminds me a little bit about like you know when Sasha Baron Cohen got really well known. So films hmm. like Bruno, even though they're only like seventy minutes long, took like seven years to make because <laughs> you know there's so many like real life celebrity interactions that you had to manufacture for for the piece. Mm. And you've got many of these in this one, like the John Mayer one, the guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway? And you think, yeah, this it's quite hard to manufacture things that have a reflection of reality or require some actual real-life events, you know, media, uh, social media um, known events to take place for the film to work. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't mm. be surprised if this was like a labour of love over, over many years to give it that authentic feeling, you know? Yeah, I mean, the specificity of... The I need to, by the way, work on my pronunciation that for the next episode because I've said it like four times and I've st- <laughs> stumbled my way through it every time. Um, of like when he went to the prank audition, um, I was just like, "Oh, that was did brutal!" He, did, he, did he actually go? And then afterwards, I went back, found it, found the channel, and like tried to find the, the thing. I'm like, "No, he's like created this from there." I'm like, "He's created." That, oh yeah. my god! Like just. This is obviously someone who's watched a lot of them, like watched a lot of these mm. things, so that he could get this down. You no, know, actually going to like the Eternals premiere, you know, I I think there's a, yeah. a, an am- there's yeah. an amazing cut where he's at that premiere and he's over the hedge and he's got his little camcorder filming it, and then he goes to the selfie stick where he's oh, filming himself God. filming. So so going back just briefly before you talk about that shot, that was when I knew. I mean, so so I, f- I just give the listeners some context. When I first got an inkling, there's a lot of really, really brutal scenes at the beginning. And bearing in mind, this is in the context of me thinking this was an actual, a, a, a documentary filmmaker working through YouTube who's found a guy online that he's wanted to make a film about in the same way that the boogie film operates as. Mm. Um, but there was too many scenes of the abuse of him at the hands of his family for it to be real. Do you know what I mean? That was when I, yeah. I started to twig. I was like, no way would he have captured, you know, the bit where his brothers yes. are like, you know, beating on him and stuff. But still, you know, I was still 50-50 at that point. But the moment that really got me, I was like, the keynote, the absolute aesthetic beauty of that 360 selfie shot yeah. uh, was the moment. I was like, this cannot be real because that is like one of the best shots I've seen in years. That's <laughs> unbelievable. The shot, um, uh, yeah, that, that cut is amazing that switch of angle and it is up. It, you know it's like um you know it did remind me of like i don't know if you've ever seen symbio psycho taxiplasm that movie have you ever seen that no. film oh it's no, an amazing no, film it's about a f- okay it's a film set in a park and you see like the interactions happening between people and then there's another layer to the film where you see the making of that film and then there's another, there's a third layer to the film showing the making of that and then the surrounding area as well. Like it goes, it takes an even more panoramic view. So you go Amazing. from like film, making of, panoramic of the thing. And it reminded me of that, of just Amazing. how jarring that feeling was. And, you know, it, the... It, it, um, it, that, that. The swirling effect was really like, because it's kind of at the point in the film, and I think this is why the film is so well put together and edited. Um, it's obviously a spiraling descent into, you know, chaos, mm. madness, in terms of the way he's conspiracy theory. Fame in, yeah, exactly. He's seeking fame initially in quite a harmless way, it seems, although it's having quite a profound effect on his family dynamics. Um, mm. But when. When everything comes apart, the the dream of him becoming an actor, his grandma passing away, his pa- his family basically saying you're pissing away your inheritance, and and obviously his humiliation at the hands of uh, the fake, um, uh, at the hands of the fake uh, interview guy, um, fake audition guys, that's when that shot comes into play, and it's just like all the mania of it, all the like sensory overload of all the different social media platforms that are pulling him into that world and sucking him, you know, deeper into the depths of that. Um, that shot just hits at that perfect time for it. And it's mm. such a powerful visual illustration of, you know, because it's it's quite a realistic, um, you know, yeah. tale, isn't it? You know, tale as old as time, the people who've gone to Hollywood and, you know, basically ended up killing themselves because they can't reach their dreams. Then that hyper accelerated through the modern um, methods of things like social media and stuff. And it's mm. just this horrible recipe, like this toxic recipe for just like 
self-destruction and self-delusion and the film mm. is so you know quick on its feet and it captures all of that you know in all its kind of lunacy and madness um let me just give you one quick quote from the top rated letterbox <laughs> review of this film because it pertains to the shot that you and i are both quite enamored with <laughs> it says uzo had the low angle effect hitchcock had the pov shot Goddard had the jump cut and O'Malley has the masterful selfie stick floating camera. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The, the Which, attack... Yeah, I'm, I'm all on board that. <laughs> the attack on Colin Mockery when he goes to the hair and that swirl oh my of like God. violence that happens, it was just incredible. That was absolutely the, the way incredible. that's foreshadowed with his his that kind of understated moment where you first get a glimpse of how insane he is as well, where he's yeah. gone to that improv class and cut that guy's ponytail, and you again it's lent realism by the fact that you're seeing the real time Facebook comment response to what he's supposedly done, yeah, um, and all of it's just kind of that cumulative effect of kind of whipping you into this like, idea that yeah this. This is all very plausible, like terrifyingly yeah. plausible, and I think that's probably yeah. why it upset you so much. Yeah, it reminds me of the, you know, I think it would be, make for a great double bill with the film Spree. I don't know if you saw that from a few years ago. It was um, really recommend that. What that got down as well was like Twitch stream comments. It got the specific feeling of those comments correct, and I believe the director actually wrote every single comment so that it was like. You know, it, it did feel authentic, and I think mm, that this I'm sure captures that's the case that authentic- here as well. Yeah, yeah, like that sort of Facebook pile on. You know, the YouTube reactions, the TikTok reactions as well. Like it felt real, and that was the product yeah. of the person who works online and is online and feels online. You know, a hundred percent. That that whole style was kind of um, began with something like Catfish, didn't it? In twenty ten, it was like the yeah. first film that kind of did that whole like part of the filmmaking and then and Fincher did a lot of it in social network as well whereby the filmmaking is actually you know um what what's what's in the frame is is comments coming up on a on a on a computer screen and how yeah. you can kind of use that to kind of uh present a, a reality an alternative reality within the context of the of the world that the film is building mm. and i think you've got now fast forward 13 years where you know, that lifestyle is ubiquitous for all of us. You know, yeah. we're all terminally online. You've got that filmmaking kind of warped and inverted and, and, and turned in on itself to its kind of to its logical endpoint, whereby, you know, it's just destroying the minds of people. But we're seeing it presented as a Facebook comment, which, you know, mm. should be harmless, but really, you know, we know how kind of how kind of damaging it, it can be. Um, yeah. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't really articulated that very well, but I, I do think that this film um, is very conversant with social media in a way that's really sophisticated and, and mm. really quite true to life. And then, you know, how can we, how, how can we get away from the, the, the set piece being um, a conspiracy theory delivered at Waterworld <laughs> at the Universal <laughs> Studios Waterworld bit. I mean, yeah. that, was, that, Brilliant. That, that might be one of the most genius moves like <laughs> of yeah. the year in yeah. any film. Yeah. I was absolutely Absol- loving that. <laughs> it was incredible. 